The tale of BC United continues to be a political failure for the ages. And just when you thought it was over, they found a whole new way to be embarrassing. Honestly, at this point, I just admire the resourcefulness. So we've already talked about this a little bit. I'll link a longer breakdown below. But long story short, the BC Liberal Party, which had historically been a little bit right-leaning, elected a new leader, Kevin Falcon. Not too long after, he rebranded the party as the BC United Party. Almost immediately after, the party collapsed in the polls. Now, this wasn't entirely because of the naming, there were also historic levels of incompetence, but the name didn't help. But as this happened, a group of hardline conservatives broke away to form their own new party. But instead of just starting from scratch, they took over the mostly defunct BC Conservatives. And they've now emerged as a primary rival to the provincial NDP. And not long before the election, Kevin Falcon decided to just throw the towel in entirely and abandon running any BC United candidates in the election. Well, he thought about running them for a minute there and then decided not to. It's all been a bit confusing. And this is historic levels of political incompetence. It is hard to wrap your head around how he has completely destroyed his party, but it is the pinnacle of political comedy. They even followed the rule of threes. See, jokes are best when they're delivered in threes. My favorite example of this is that men are scared of three things, spiders, heights, and commitment. And it's because this is blowing up on Kevin Falcon and the BC United in three distinct and equally hilarious ways. First up, before the party's even fully dead, political vultures are fighting over the corpse. Former federal Liberal cabinet minister Herb Dollywall has been fighting to take over the corpse of the BC Liberals. Or more specifically, just the name. He tried to start a new party before the election dropped called the New Liberal Party of BC. But Elections BC said no, it would be confusing because there's already a Liberal Party on the ballots. Even though there isn't a Liberal Party on the ballots, they changed to BC United and then they came off the ballots, but they're still not on the ballots or Liberal. It's a little confusing. It, what is even happening? The party isn't running candidates and it's informally shut down, but they also just started their membership drive, sending out letters to current members asking them to renew. So if you want to buy a ticket on the Titanic, they're available for cheap. Going fast. Now, it doesn't look like Herb Dollywall is trying to take over the remains of the party. Instead, he's just trying to start something new on his own, some sort of new liberal party. But the new liberal party, or NLP, feels like it has some branding issues right out of the gates. Titanic 2. But the second part of BC United's hilarious and historic failure that I wanted to talk about is their intention behind shutting down their party abruptly right before the election. You see, they were worried about splitting the vote on the right, and they were worried about leading to an NDP win. So in order to avoid that, they just handed the keys over to the BC Conservatives and said, you guys just go ahead, beat the NDP, we'll just get out of the way. Problem is, Kevin Falcon, the leader of the BC United, didn't really talk to anybody in the party before doing that. And as a result, a lot of people weren't impressed. Out of 87 ridings, 30 BC United candidates are running as independents. This means they are much less likely to win because they don't have the party infrastructure or the party credibility but they're still going to be pulling votes away from the BC Conservatives. And that means there's going to be vote splitting, but without any sort of party infrastructure or legitimacy. You're just going to have a stack of independent MLAs. And, to top it all off, BC Conservatives trailing in the polls! Before you even consider the vote splitting in some of these individual ridings, this is all just shaping up to be one of the worst political strategic moves in all of BC political history. And that is really saying something, if you know anything about the history of Vancouver. It is messy. The third and perhaps most silly thing that BC United have left us all with is a parting gift. Debt. Because what historical political failure isn't complete without saddling the public with responsibility? Even though BC United proudly bragged about fundraising millions and millions of dollars over the last several years, for some reason they just can't find enough to cover all their bills. Even though they were supposedly fully prepared for an election campaign, for some reason they don't seem to have the money to pay their former employees, specifically the severance that they owe them. As a result, they had to go to the BC legislature and beg for the public to foot the bill. So this entire BC United failure is not only going to cost conservatives in British Columbia the election, it's also going to cost the public about $800,000 to a million dollars. So I guess, joke's over. Because if you are a member of BC United, you're still paying the price for Kevin Falcon's incompetence. This is an all-timer of a political failure, folks. I really think we need to establish pulling a falcon as a verb. And it works in two ways, because falcons plummet from staggering heights at remarkable speed. And you can train them like that one kid in my side of the mountain that we all wanted to be when we read it in grade 5. So yeah, new political term, pulling a falcon. 